Okay, welcome to my playthrough review of XCOM Enemy Unknown, as you can see from the title here. Now this is a, a fairly new format for, for me, so you have to bear with me as we go through. Ah, right, here we are. You find me just as I'm about to begin uh, loading up a game. Um, the plan is to to go through, have a look at the various features of the game, and, and let you get a feel for, for how it all works. Okay, so first of all, what we have here is our main base. I'm fairly far into the game at this point, um, just to give you a lot of the different features. Your base is built into a into a into a, a mountain side essentially. So you you build your way down, and you've got your your research area where you can research various alien technology or or bits and pieces. You can autopsy aliens in, in fairly gruesome detail as well, which is always lovely. Engineering, where you can build things, which I'm sure you'll all be surprised about. Um, this is where you can build the things that you've researched. You've got lots of different weapons that you can produce, different types of armor, and even different ships and things that you can use for them. Uh, for example, you've got the Firestorm here, which is kind of a halfway between a frisbee and a UFO. Surprisingly effective, actually. And then you've got the barracks, where your men uh, live and train. And, and these two guys are always jogging. And I do mean always jogging. They never leave. They must be the two fittest guys in the universe, basically. And these two guys down here in the hospital, always having a good old laugh. Even when there's no wounded people, I, I don't know why they're there. But you can look at various things. One, one uh, quite nice thing is um, any soldiers that you've lost during your your battles, they have a little memorial. As you can see, only one of the guys has been lost from mine, because I'm amazing. Um, <laughs> no, I'm luck. But uh, it, it gives you a little bit of a thing, uh, a little bit of a summary of what each of them do, have, have done, and, and what they died and when. It's, Quite a nice little touch. It doesn't do anything for the game. It it serves no practical purpose other than to look quite good. So, eh. you've got a training school where you can buy basically upgrades for your soldiers. The Psy Labs. These come on later in the game where uh, you can harness alien technology to essentially discover psychic abilities in your soldiers. They essentially become mind hackers or Jedi's. A little bit, I guess. And the way you do that is you put them in a tank for ten days. And sometimes you find out one of them's gifted. It seems like a terribly sensible way of finding out whether someone's psychic by basically putting them in a phone booth and shooting rays into their eyes for hours. Um, they seem none the worse for wear of it, though. And then you've got your, your soldier list and who's doing what. You, when soldiers are wounded, they take a bit of time to recover. Mainly because of my poor... Poor uh, generalship. They get shot a lot. It, you can also research and build um, machinery, so like mobile gun platforms that you can use instead of soldiers. And they can fly, which is always handy. Different uh, soldiers have different abilities. This is my character of me, because I'm so terribly humble. You will notice. Well, those of you that know me will, will be aware that this is a somewhat idealised representation of me. I very rarely leave the house with power armour on. Although I am, of course, quite that manly. I also don't generally have plasma weaponry, but that's beside the point. You have very basic abilities. You have your will, which is uh, how well you can resist mind attacks, how good you are at aiming, and your hit points and, and defence stats are fairly self-explanatory. Uh, as you, as your character makes kills and has um, missions under his belt, you level up or you get promoted, as the game calls it. And you have the, you have different choices of how to uh, improve your soldier's abilities. Like for example, when he gets to sergeant, you can choose to have lightning reflexes, where if an enemy has a reaction shot against you, it automatically misses the first time, which I chose because it's really useful. If you happen to be someone that runs right up to someone and then shoots them in the face, you get an extra critical chance if you choose that one. But I prefer the not being shot option. This is me, after all. And it, it goes down to 
uh, your basic like, immunity to critical hits and things like that. So th the longer your character lives, the better they get. Which has its upsides and its downsides. The upsides are is that you have a genuine sense of development out of your, 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 your soldiers and you get more of an attachment. The downside is you do get very attached to those soldiers and there is a significant difference in usability between your veterans and your new guys. Which means if you lose a lot of your good guys, you are pretty much in trouble because sending out a group of rookies later on in the game not so good so I'm trying to build up some of my character stats another little feature that doesn't actually affect the gameplay in any way shape or form but is a fantastic little addition is is this the uh, the nicknames as your characters go as they develop it and and they level up they get awarded random uh, nicknames like I said, it doesn't affect the game in any way, but it's a nice little touch and just adds a little bit of fun to it, and also it helps you develop um, an attachment to them, so that's fantastic. Not enough games have little things that don't actually impact the game, but do at the same time, if that makes sense. It, it just adds a little bit of quality and immersion, and immersion is probably a word you're going to hear a lot from me over the course of my reviews, because I think it's a very important thing. Now in homage to the original game you can customize the loadouts of your character now it is fairly stripped back from the original XCOM the original XCOM everyone could be loaded up with pretty much anything how much they could carry was determined by a strength statistic everyone's aim was different and things like that this is a lot more stripped back most likely because of concessions to the console gaming genre because this comes out not just on PC but also on consoles and inventory systems are notoriously difficult to implement on effectively on console games so you have the various different armors that I've recruited all the way from your basic body armor all the way up to Archangel armor which is basically a flight suit uh, you've got a jetpack on your armor I give my guys Titan armor generally the ones like this character who's an assault class and I'll get onto classes in a minute um, but he basically runs up to people and shoots them. Um, he doesn't generally need to fly all that much because that gets you out of cover. Characters that need the flying ability are usually a sniper who having them up at the back of the field is pretty useful. Um, so he, I give him the slightly tougher um, Titan armor so he's a bit more resilient. You've got the various weapons that you can use. Refined by class which is again something different to the original XCOM like a sniper class can, is the only one that can use a sniper rifle and, and what you can use is limited by your class so my character here is is an assault character which is essentially a, a close-up specialist who's designed to outflank the opposition and so he gets shotguns or assault rifles the alloy cannon is basically just a plasma shotgun give or take it's very effective and it gets you a higher critical chance than your average so it's quite handy your pistols very basic, normal, normal ballistic gun, laser pistol, plasma pistol. Fairly straightforward. He doesn't use that very often. You can add an extra sort of item that you can put with them, and that ranges from a grenade to extra reinforced defenses, better aim, med, med kits. Um, obviously very helpful. He doesn't really need those. Though. We have an arc thrower, which is essentially a stun gun, a taser. That's how you can taser an enemy that's low on health, bring them back and interrogate them and find out lots of useful information. That's that's how I got alien grenade technology and I uh, and various other bits and pieces. So that that's quite handy and it, it adds a little tactical dimension. Again, you're limited to one, although the support class can get a, a talent to use two. Uh, to have two side on, but you still can't take two of the same thing, so my medic can't take two medical kits, which is a bit annoying, and again is a lot more stripped down and limited than the original game, but you take them as they come, and, and it does make for some quite challenging decisions tactically. Now, you can customize your character quite a lot. The customization, as I touched on in my text review, is a bit limited. You'll see on the characters that you'll see a lot of the characters look very samey. There's not really any armor choice to speak of. Really, you can change the color of your armor, which is all very lovely. So like, I could have my my frontline fighters running in in fabulous pink if I wanted to. Um, but that's about it. You can change the facial the the, the facial hair and the and the hair and things like that. But uh, one thing that I do know. Um, they they do keep one thing from the original game, which is the funky hair, 
this haircut was in the original game and it was ridiculous. And I've had it referred to as the Guile hair. Guile from Street Fighter and that's pretty much what it is. It looks bloody ridiculous. But, you know, it's nice to see a... Uh, nice to see a bit of a... Uh, consistency from the original. They obviously were paying attention to that sort of thing. So that's a nice little homage again. There's a lot of things about this game which don't need to be in the game, but they make a big difference, um, just for the, the fun and, and the, the tongue-in-cheek. And you can see there's lots of different types of classes. Uh, like I said, I'd touch on. Uh, you've got the Heavy, who has a rocket launcher and a, and a big, big machine gun, and they can do various bits and pieces, but they're basically your, your tank. You run them in and shoot things a lot. They sort of distract enemies while the, the assault class run around the side and shoot them in the back. Your support is basically your your medic. They have the ability to uh, to do um, medical stuff, so they can revive fallen comrades, they can cure poisons, that sort of thing. Um, and they can also throw smoke grenades, which are quite possibly the most useless thing in the game. I don't think I've ever thrown one since the first two or time, two or three times, but they have their use, and they are vital. If if you don't bring a medic with you, you suddenly realise you need to. Snipers, when used appropriately, the snipers are the most fantastic utility in the game. When they're kitted out with the jetpack, the Archangel armor and the ability to see uh, enemies from anyone's perspective and shoot them. That's fantastic. You can have them flying in the sky right at the back of the map, and as long as they can see the enemy, they can use another squad member's sight radius. So they could be 100 miles away and still get a 100% chance to shoot. Allied with uh, the highest level where you can, what's known as double tap, where if you kill an enemy you then get another go. They are absolutely deadly. And to give you an, an idea of that, my main sniper here has had 33 missions and killed 91 enemies. Which is pretty efficient, I'll give you. Um, so yeah, those are the main classes really, and they don't deviate. You don't get to choose what your characters develop into, which can be a bit weird. You'll get characters at the beginning when they don't have a... When you first start the game, they don't actually start with a, a defined ability. They just start as a normal rookie. And then they're randomly assigned, it seems, a, a skill after they, they get promoted. Um, I've taken an option in my, my, tra in my officer training school to have all uh, new recruits have uh, their their classification set. It's a bit hit or miss. Again, limiting, but it, it makes for a tactical decision. It's just a bit frustrating at times. You've got your hangar where you look after your various ships. Um, the standard bits and pieces. And then you've got the situation room where it keeps track of the, the ratings of the various countries that you're looking after. Fairly standard. I've got uh, monitoring satellites all over the world now, so the aliens can't really get round or get away from uh, my sight. So, and, and as you can see, I've got planes stationed pretty much all over the world. So if they appear anywhere, they're going to get taken down, which is always helpful. And it just means it's easier to manage once you get to that point. So yes, like I said, the um, the situation screen gives you an idea of what the panic state is in each uh, continent. Uh, these little squares here show how much panic there is in each each area, so alien activity, uh, unopposed UFO sightings, invasions, terrorism. That, uh, that affects uh, how panic they are. If, this, if that fills up then the the area may leave the XCOM council, which is essentially you lose a life. You've got a, a bar here for every group that leaves the council. You get a notch on the bar. When the bar fills up, you lose the game. The, the plug's pulled on the XCOM protocol, so it's essentially a, a bit of a cover-up for a, a live system, but it, it, it's quite a good one. When you don't have satellites on each one, you get um, abductions that you have to um, oppose. You'll generally get three at a time, one in different places, and that does make it a challenge to choose which one to 
to go to because you'll you'll find that whichever ones you ignore, their terror state will jump two, sometimes three blocks, whereas the one that you choose will drop down, and, and each one you get uh, you get. Uh, rewards for certain things, so one might offer money, one might offer engineers or scientists, the other might uh, offer a particularly good soldier, so that that can come into it. Uh, you can also <laughs> you can go onto the grey market and sell the stuff that you find, so you can hawk alien bodies, you can essentially just go, who wants to buy a body? And you can sell it off to the highest bidder, which I always think is quite funny, and you just have this image of someone hawking around bits of dead alien to people. But apparently that's how you finance yourself, so there you go. Well, what we'll do now is we've adequately explored the base and everything. I think it's time to, to move on. In fact, there is a alien terror attack in the making as we speak, so we can have a look. Essentially, a, an alien terror attack is where a city is being terrorized by a group of aliens, and they're basically slaughtering all of the civilians. So it's your job to send in your guys and rescue the situation. So you get your lineup of soldiers here and as I said before you can sort of see that with the male characters they all look basically the same apart from little details on their heads so there's not a lot of deviation and it's kinda worse with the the female soldiers they all basically look the same apart from what weapon they hold and their hairstyle there's not a huge amount of variation but Ah, it still looks good enough for what it is. It's it's not really about the dis the display. I mean, it would be nice if these were better, and it would be something to improve upon in the in the sequel if there is one. Now I know that I don't appear to have a sniper on my team because my main sniper is uh, injured. So what I'll do is I'll get rid of this unit, and I will add in my secondary sniper in fabulous pink. Not necessarily the most sensible colour for a sniper, but. Uh, my friend who I based it on insisted that he had pink armor, so whatever works for him. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. We've got one sort of mid-level rookie that I'm trying to level up. In fact, I notice he has a laser pistol rather than a plasma one. He's probably not going to use it. But always worth having. So, let's head on down and see what happens. Now as we go, uh, you sort of fly across the map straight across in real time, which is quite interesting. I like the idea it gives me the chance to return to base, as if I get there and go, actually, no, do you know what? I don't fancy it, and I just go away. But no, no I'm a real man, so let's take them on. The drop site for this operation will be in Canada. We've gotten reports of alien activity taking place in a densely populated urban center. We should move to secure the area and minimize further civilian casualties. Apparently my job is to stop people dying. Now normally the loading screens are not as long as this. It usually loads up pretty quick. I mean it's loaded up fairly quick there, but because I'm um, recording video it slows the game down a fair bit. So do take the loading times on this with a pinch of salt. Um, they're a lot quicker in the original game. So yeah, same with sort of texture popping and things like that. The game's suffering a bit for me recording at the same time. Um, what can I say? I don't have the the top-notch computers that you might expect. But, uh, yeah, so the guys are running in. You get dropped off at a random point in the area. You don't normally get jumped straight away. Okay. Now. Okay. Just to give you a bit of a rundown, we appear to be on top of a bridge, so we've got limited space. Now, you move your characters one at a time. It's a tactical squad-based uh, game. Now, you could you have two phases of movement in your game. You can move to the blue line here, and that takes up one allocation of your move. Or you can move even further and use up your full move, and that's called dashing. If you move within the blue area, you'll get another go. So you could run, stop on the blue line, and then take a shot, or what's called overwatch. Overwatch is where you basically stand awaiting a mon an enemy to, or an alien to move in your vicinity, and then you take a shot at them. It's like being on your guard, or you can hunker down, which is when you're in cover, you take cover, and it, it raises the ability for you to, to defend yourself as you come. So you, you basically, it's harder to hit you. 
Um, you've got various other options here. Um, because I've got a, a taser, the, the arc thrower, I've got the stun ability and different abilities. Run and gun for my type of character is where I can move all the way to the end of the yellow line and still take a shot at the end. And then you've got your base zoom fire. Now this particular mission, because it's a terror mission, we are meant to rescue civilians. Civilians look like this, like your typical city dweller. They've got a big halo around them. Uh, the halo is so that if you send a, a, a soldier who stands in that area, finishes one of his movement turns in that, that area, that civilian is then declared rescued, they run off, and they can't be killed. You've got a, t a counter at the top here, 18 civilians are out there, none have been rescued, but none have been killed yet. I suspect both those numbers will be changing fairly rapidly. Now on here as well, you'll notice when I put my cursor up to things, there's shield icons, either half full, or uh, if I can find one, yet yeah, fully covered. I don't appear to have any good cover here, so I can't demonstrate the full... Oh, here we go. Uh, full shield. Full shield means it's it's full cover, and it's more... Uh, it, it's You get more cover than you do on a half cover. Uh, it just means it'll be harder to hit you from behind full cover, and you'll have more defense against it. Now, I'll move fairly basically for you. Now, this character here f is designed to flank people, so I'm going to send him up the left-hand side here. And then you encounter some enemies. Let's have a look. Now, normally when you encounter them, they get uh, they run off and hide. We got a basic drone here. That means I didn't get quite near enough to see them properly. Now, please don't judge me too harshly on my ability to play at this point because I'm going to try and make this fairly interesting. So we're going to start charging up to attack them. So yeah, when you can see an enemy. You get a little logo in the bottom here, telling you what they are. And that is not going to be good for me, because, rather typically, I've run into one of the most dangerous enemies, a Sexoid, and it's essentially a giant walking tank. Um, if, you've, if you've seen Robocop, it, it's like the big robot thing in Robocop. That thing is going to do me some damage. So... Time to spread my team out. My medic is going to not cower at the back, but she's going to sensibly hide here and keep her options open. Now, my sniper, I'm going to turn on his jetpacks, and he's going to fly up here in a sensible place. I'm going to change to his pistol, because he's moved, he can't shoot a sniper off. I'm going to put him in overwatch as well, so he can shoot. Now, that's my other... Uh, outflanking type character, so he's going to move over here. And I've got two heavies on this mission, which may or may not be a good idea. We'll find out fairly soon. Okay, move him up a bit further. Now be the aliens go. It's actually very clever the way this gets done, uh, because you it, you get the suspense of watching what the aliens are doing and not knowing what the ones off screen are doing, and you see they're targeting the civilians and, and rather rapidly finishing them off. Uh, this is another quite a clever feature, cinematic view. Whenever anything particularly interesting happens, like someone is killed or something, it cuts to a cinematic shot. It's kind of reminiscent of Fallout um, and that sort of game where you get a bit of an action shot. It doesn't get old. It's, it, uh, it really does add to the, the character of the game. It's um, very very effective in in that matter. Uh, and and you, you'll see that an awful lot. It's quite satisfying. Let's have a look. I've got a rocket launcher, so might as well use that. Surprisingly effective against robots. Uh, my view's blocked. The, the camera angles can be a little bit frustrating in this game, but you can rotate so it's no biggie. So, let's see if I can hit it. Ah. I've not got a shot. So. Now you'll see here, you can tab between which enemies you want to shoot at, and it gives you a rating of what percent chance you have to hit it. 
and you can sort of judge it on that. Now because my heavies have a certain skill slate, they can fire twice in a go. So I'm going to take the higher percentage shot and see what happens. There you go, we get cinematic because it's dead. It's very satisfying, I can tell you. Now, if I wanted to stop it moving, I could use suppression. What that does is it sends a load of fire over. It doesn't actually hit anything, but it means if they try and move in their turn, I get an automatic shot on them. And it stops them moving. It's a good way to pin people down where you're trying to flank them and things. But uh, here I'm going to try and take out the other drone. Main reason for that is they're annoying little buggers, and if you don't kill them, they heal the big guy. Care of. Now, my flanking guy here is going to move up, just run around the side. He's my rookie, so he's not the toughest guy in the world. Now, I can't see anyone from here, so I'm going to move him up to here so he can rescue this civilian. fairly straightforward. Now, my medic could probably do with pushing up a little further. She can still hold her own. Okay. Now, this is where you'll get an experience of what the sniper's like. Now, he has a very handy ability called Headshot, but he also has Disabling Shot. Disabling Shot is a tactical ability. It doesn't do a lot of damage, but if you hit with it, it stops the enemy using their main weapon on the next go. Now, as much as I'd love to try and do a load of damage to this thing, I think stopping it you shooting its main weapon would be quite handy, so let's have a go. I'll probably miss, but... Nope, hit it. See, I only did three damage, so... Well, that didn't go very well. Um, he kind of blew up my medic a bit. Okay. Oh well, that's gone well. And this, this, uh, this, this thing is on fire, so this is going to explode fairly soon. So probably a good idea to get my soldier out here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take one step up here to save him, and then I'm going to run him as best I can up on the top here, because it works in three dimensions as well, which is quite handy. So I can run him up here. And he'll be out of line of sight because that thing hits pretty hard. I have to say I'm not too sure about this uh, this sign here. I'm not sure what that's meant to be advertising. Really bad sunglasses, presumably. But there you go. Back to the business of trying to kill this thing. Now this guy probably wants to be somewhere a bit safer. Um, so we'll just pop him here. Uh, we'll shoot the thing. 45% not great, so I'm probably going to miss. No! Oh, and I hit for a critical hit, which is always helpful. Now, the medic definitely needs to get somewhere a bit safer. We'll leave her for a minute. Let's see if my heavy could do a bit more damage. Ah! Oh. That is exceptionally satisfying when you do actually manage to kill one of these things, especially as it's... I, I have to say, you don't normally hit quite that well. I've been extremely lucky, so uh, there you go. Well, let's send him down here. He's probably going to get jumped, but there you go. Send the rookie in. Yeah, there we go. Hey, see, that's what normally happens when you encounter things. They basically run off and hide. Oh, oh, that's not good. Okay. Well, that went well. But just to give you an idea, we've got a number of different enemies. You got uh, you got the berserker here. This guy does pretty much what he sounds like. He runs up to you and hits you with those big metal spikes on the front. That's about the gist of it. It's not anything too sophisticated, but uh, he is really tough. And also, he has this unique ability where if you hit him he runs towards you. Um, so, uh, now, the other creatures we have here are chrysalids. Uh, if you've ever seen the movie Starship Troopers, you'll know roughly what we're about. They basically run up and stab you with their spiky talons. 
Again, fairly basic. They run up to you and they stab you. Now, this character here has some of the psy psy uh, psychic abilities. He's got Mind Fray where he basically psychically attacks someone and does damage. You can send one of them into a panic where they could potentially attack their own side, or you can try Mind Control them where you take them over for a bit. Now, but because he's still pretty healthy, it's kind of hard to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot him and hopefully do some damage. Yep. Intimidate is a skill that they do when they're hit and it basically attacks the will of your character and there's a chance it might panic your your soldier in which case they do exceptionally stupid things like shoot their own team or run away because that's how they roll now let's move him out it is vital vital that you stick to cover in this game if you are not in cover you are dead extremely dead so you'll notice I'm sticking about as close to cover as I possibly can do. Now, uh, funnily enough, you've got a better shot at the tiny guy behind a wall than you do the big giant guy on the lip there. Sometimes the targeting seems a little bit weird, but I think it's to do with uh, relative uh, enemy armor and things like that. So y your your soldiers do sometimes have a knack of shooting through a brick wall when they couldn't possibly see something as well, which is a bit weird, but. It'll save your life sometimes, which is quite handy. Eh, good shot. Not bad for a medic. Now, this is where the sniper would normally be able to hit, but he's a little bit too far away. So, I'll just move him a bit nearer. There we go, he's in range now. So now all of these cars are going to explode, so I'm very glad my soldiers aren't next to them this time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what happens when your uh, when your guys get hit. Oh yeah, he's dead. He's pretty thoroughly dead. Down one man. Hmm. Well, there you go. Fortunately, he was a rookie, so I didn't really care too much. Well, that looks remarkably like they've just killed a. Yeah, they're, they're killing a lot of civilians in the back there, which is unfortunate. Okay. Now, my, my guy being up here isn't necessarily that helpful for me at this point, so I'm going to run him down here. And that's how tough they are. They'll just drop a full story just because they can. And why not? So, uh, see who we can shoot from back here. 77... No, that's not too bad. Give it a go. You see? You want something done? Do it yourself. Don't send the rookies. Send the really good guys. <laughs> no percent of mind controlling. That sucks. 7%. 7%. Okay, I don't think I'm going to be able to do much to him. Probably because he hasn't got much of a brain. We have a 65% chance to shoot it. Let's give that a go. Yeah, we got him. Dead and gone. <laughs> His corpse lying. Just the two corpses there lying on top of their fallen comrade. No one seems that bothered. That's trained soldiers for you right there. They're efficient. They're efficient. Oh, look at that, 100% chance to get him. What's my mind control? Mind control 77%. I'm going to see if I can warp his mind. And he'll fight for me. <laughs> Fantastic. That's always good fun. Okay. So, yeah, as you can see, it's a fairly... Uh, it's a fairly st strong and well uh, well put together game. There's genuine conse consequences for, for playing your part carelessly. And there's some rewards to be, to be won by, by sensible and deliberate play. Like I said, I was kind of charging my guys in a little bit here. So normally you'd, you'd play a little bit more carefully. Oh yeah, also, guys that get killed come back as zombies. That's really annoying. You get swamped with zombies a lot. 
And that's going to be another one dead. Yeah. These things really do start getting squirrely rather quickly. And this is not going well. I am not going to get a good report for this mission. <laughs> Ah, oh, you see, there you go. They panic. Sometimes they shoot the enemies. Sometimes they shoot your friends. Not really that helpful, I'll be honest with you. That's why it's important to have soldiers with high willpower. Otherwise, they will freak out and kill each other. And that will happen. And it's really annoying. But there's not a lot you can do about it. And you see, I don't mind... The enemy, the alien that I'm controlling, shooting things. Oh, so yeah, I can't control that character, that that soldier at the moment. She's far too busy being a wuss. So we'll just we'll just take a shot over her shoulder and kill the thing that's munching on her brains. Now, take the opportunity to run up here. It's very creative gameplay here, I have to say. Very creative. But, uh... Oh, well, I'll give you an idea of what the grenades do if I can get a shot. There we go. I was going to nuke my own guy, but... Who cares? The grenades are quite good fun. <laughs> yes, I do want to do friendly fire, thank you. It's only an alien, who cares? You guys are amazing shots with those grenades, I must say. They never miss. It's fantastic. Wish I was that good with throwing things. So, let's have a look. We'll just take out something useful. See, look, can't really see him very well, but because the other squad mates can get a good shot, he's going to shoot him, and he's pretty much guaranteed to kill him. And that's why snipers are amazing. And none of the melee aliens can get to him. Oh yeah, I think he's probably going to hit. <laughs> the ambient sound effects in the game are something that's very underrated as well. Um, a lot of games overlook how important ambient sounds and music are. This this game is, is different. You, you hear a lot of the uh, aliens actually, their, their noises, even before you see them, so it gives you a bit of a realistic idea of what's out there. When you when you don't see any aliens, you uh, you have a fairly generic soundtrack. As soon as you encounter an alien, the the urgency of the soundtrack really does pick up, and it, it's it's quite a clever dynamic. It's something so simple, but something yet very effective. It's like a lot of aspects of this game. There's stuff that doesn't need to be in there, but the fact it is in there just infinitely improves the game. If it was all gone, the core gameplay mechanic was still the same. It would still be very XCOM. But it wouldn't be anywhere near the experience that it is, and that's it's those little things that make the game so much so much better than than the than, than the sum of its parts. The overall game is fantastic. It's very tactical, and it's incredibly satisfying when you come up with a a, a more sensible way of doing things. It like you you can take the the squad's turns in any order, and so it's quite rewarding when you realise that you've you've thought. And you've, you've used your sniper to take out someone that's blocking someone else's route who can then move further down. A and that results in you winning, uh, you know, going out with no casualties. And and it, it does make a big difference. The, the game itself, um, for anyone that played the old um, the old XCOM games, this is very, very faithful to that. Um, it feels just like the old XCOM games, which I can't give it any more... Um, compliment than that, because that game felt w was brilliant. Especially for the era, it, it, it's something of a bygone game that you don't get much anymore. Uh, the the tactical squad-based um, shoot, the shooter is very prevalent these days, but the, the tactical squad uh, R RTS almost, in this vein, the sort of spreadsheet game, it, it's kind of a dying breed. It's not many of it about. It, in, in its heyday, you had a lot of them and they were very popular because they they maximized the gaming experience with the technology available these days a lot of the games base pretty much on exploiting the technology available and so you have a lot of the the the, the war simulators the 
the the first person shooters like your Battlefield and your and your Modern Warfare and things like that. And this is a very different type of game. And it's a lot more slower. Uh, it's a lot slower. It's more considered. And it's the sort of game that you get out of it what what you put in. And if you give it the chance, this sort of game will really take you away. And even just your basic fights like this, they can go hundreds of different ways, and they're really engaging. And like I said, the immersion is there. You care about these these soldiers. You can personalize them and give them names of your friends, like I've done. And you can have a bit of a, a, a chuckle about that. But it, it really does make you you care and you don't want to see them die they're more than just a sprite that runs in so yeah it, it I, I would give this a very high recommendation if you're going into it thinking it's going to be sort of an adrenaline pump you know twitch reflex shoot them up it's not really for you but if you go into it expecting it to be a considered tactical it's almost like a chess game it's a lot more exciting than a chess game, but it's that sort of thing. You you take time and you consider and you, you think about your next move and what you're going to do. It's a fantastic little game. And I know there's a lot of people out there that are looking at it thinking, should I, shouldn't I? Give it a go. You owe it to yourselves to give it a go. Even just to say that you have. Because it's a game that these days is quite rare. And for a lot of the younger gamers out there, probably haven't played a game like this before and if you haven't that's a shame and if you pass this one up it really would be genuinely a shame because it's something a little bit different and it's something a little bit special that's pretty much it well I'm gonna leave it off here but uh, as you've all seen I'm a fantastic uh, fantastic general there and I'm I think we can all agree that we'll, we'll call it a win for me but um, yeah hopefully I'll talk to you all soon and hopefully we'll get a bit of feedback on this if you get a chance I'm always up for debate and discussion about this sort of thing you can add me at, uh, at my Twitter which is Paul Isod at, uh, well at Paul Isod or, or I'm on Facebook under that name as well or you have my email address Paul Isod at 01gaming.com and love to get a bit of feedback and, and see where people would like this sort of thing to go in the future because hopefully going to do a few more of this sort of thing and hopefully this was informative and and gives you a bit of an overview of and you get a feel for how the game is and hopefully there'll be a few people out there that decide to give XCOM a, a go after all this because it is a fantastic game